as the rent-seeking and self-dealing of pharmacy benefit managers has been a focus of mine. What we've heard today and what has been the thrust of major proposed federal legislation to date has been really about transparency. And transparency is necessary, but it's not sufficient. And to that end, myself and many others in Congress have been drafting much more pointed legislation to address point-of-sale rebating, spread pricing, DIR fees, specialty pharmacy steering, improved NADAC reporting, patient's assistance legalization, prior authorization reform, and more. And yet, Wall Street and the big three PBMs believe they can shrug off this legislation and other perform proposed reforms, and don't take my word for it. A recent J.P. Morgan Equity Research report argued that Cigna and CVS investors, for example, should not overreact to state and federal scrutiny, noting that although, quote, legislation has been on the rise, we believe the PBM industry can digest these changes, end quote. Mr. Baker, uh, I'm worried that J.P. Morgan's right and that the vertical integration of PBMs with insurers and retail pharmacies fortifies them against piecemeal actions, even strong ones like the ones I mentioned. Should Congress take a comprehensive approach to reform so that we're not just squeezing the balloon but actually fully popping the gross to net bubble? I think that's an excellent question that has so many layers it's hard to give one linear answer. Um, I do fundamentally believe that the market can take care of itself if the market is given the right rules to follow. And, you know, right now, these large PBMs, because you don't know where the money's going, they have full control, they have the ability to do what they want, it goes against the American public. So maybe instead of saying transparency, we should be saying alignment of incentives. I think that would make sense. And that we need this comprehensive suite of reforms all at once so that we're not squeezing one part or the other, but really uh, doing root, root cause reform. I've been encouraged to that end that the FTC recently expanded its investigations into the anti-competitive practices of PBMs to include yet another element of their vertical integration and market concentration, which are group purchasing organizations. Haven't been talked about enough, I don't think. These are like PBMs, PBMs. Uh, and these GPOs, Ascent, Zinc, MSR, were formed by the PBMs after President Trump's proposed reforms to prescription drug rebates and have kicked into high gear in recent years as the Democrats uh, have started to crack down on the dysfunctional system under the Biden administration. Two of these PBM GPOs are headquartered overseas, despite PBMs being a uniquely American phenomenon in Switzerland and Ireland, both famous for both uh, tax and, and opacity uh, arbitrage. Uh, Mr. Baker, while these GPOs are opaque even by PBM standards, and that's saying something, and the FTC investigation is just beginning, do you think it's likely that these GPOs have been formed to do the following three things? Generate revenues and fees that won't need to be passed on to plan sponsors. Two, permit tax arbitrage and three, provide a hedge against U.S. reforms to PBM pricing practices. I think those are three very good reasons that I would create a GPO, two of which would be overseas. Yes, sir. Yes, and I want to put the PBMs on, on note right now. Uh, you are not going to be able to offshore your thievery, okay? That is not going to stand in the United States. The FTC is coming after them, and they're going to have the full support, I, I expect, of both sides of the aisle on that. Um, Mr. Asasi, you've been... Uh, I would say in this hearing and in your written testimony, probably the most vigorous defender to date uh, in, in this hearing of the PBMs, you say in your testimony that, quote, some drug costs are lower than they otherwise would be because of PBMs. And yet the trend line in the United States, averaged across all pharmaceuticals, has been for gross prices to rise and net prices to fall. In other words, PBMs have done a great job of negotiating for themselves because the delta between gross and net feeds their profits but a bad job of negotiating for patients whose out-of-pocket costs are based on gross prices. Again, their out-of-pocket costs are based on gross prices in this country. So just to be very clear, who determines the out-of-pocket exposure of a patient? The drug manufacturer or the insurance company? Uh, the insurance company. The insurance company does. It is, to me, both a violation of medical best practice and immoral to say to patients who have paid their premiums to insurance companies that when a doctor prescribes them a medicine that they need, that they have to have out-of-pocket costs. We should have zero out-of-pocket costs for medically prescribed uh, drugs in this country. And let's be very clear about who is making that out-of-pocket requirement. It is insurance companies, not drug makers. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you again for your uh, affordance.